Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, April 17th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Tonight, the preparations for Jade Helm. Then, how the OKC bombing changed our country. And ISIS includes Joe Biggs in their propaganda campaign. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And all you ISIS people threatening us, hey, we're not a French newspaper, okay? This is Texas. You want to threaten me, you can go straight to hell. You understand that? Well, WikiLeaks has released a trove of documents revealing how the government and entertainment corporations have teamed up to run a massive PSYOP against the American people. Now, these documents not only reveal a very cozy relationship between the Obama administration, the State Department, and the transnational entertainment company, Sony, but they also show how these connections are tied to the military industrial complex. So WikiLeaks notes that Sony has the ability to influence the Trans-Pacific Partnership. They can impact laws and policies, uh, but Sony's CEO, Michael Linton, is on the board of trustees of the RAND Corporation. So here we're seeing emails with RAND wanting to invite George Clooney and Kevin Spacey to some events. Linton offers to contact Valerie Jarrett, who we of course know is actually running the White House there. And uh, Sony also reached out to Rand for advice regarding the North Korean film, The Interview. So we remember how that was such a big scandal and the government used the Sony hack as a, as a means to call for even more government intrusion. And, and then of course we've seen the results of that uh, with the FCC now giving us a, an actually free and open internet. Uh, but most tellingly, we'll see here, there's an email from Richard Stengel. He's the U.S. State Department Undersecretary for Public Diplomacy and Public Affairs. And it shows how the government enlisted Sony and other entertainment corporations in the propaganda war against ISIS and Russia. Uh, in the email, he says, Michael, it was great to see you yesterday. As you could see, we have plenty of challenges encountering ISIL narratives in the Middle East and Russian narratives in Central and Eastern Europe. And he goes on to say, you know, there's so many people getting a skewed version of events, and it's not something that the State Department can handle on its own by any means. And he goes on to say how he would just love to get a, get a group of some really important people there in the entertainment industry to sit down and get some media executives, see how they can respond uh, that would be conversation about ideas, content and production, about commercial possibilities. And he said, I promise you, it will be interesting, fun, and rewarding. So, of course, then Linton said that he would send this over to uh, Walt Disney, um, Turner Broadcasting, 21st Century Fox. And, I mean, it goes on and on. There's another email there where there, a staffer is talking to the U.S. ambassador to France saying that they wanted to leverage the popularity of Sony's stars to promote the president's priorities and agenda overseas. So absolutely just groundbreaking there. WikiLeaks says that this is absolutely gonna stay in the public domain because it's important to the public people to see how the government and entertainment corporations are teaming up to run this PSYOP. I mean, our audience knows for sure that the entertainment uh, industry has been co-opted and of course they push the agenda of the government but it's really ironic, as we've seen this week, that uh, former RT host Liz Wall was one of the uh, professional experts there at a congressional hearing, basically talking about what to do to counter the weaponization of Russia's media. And of course, she was specifically talking about RT and how you know people go to RT and it's like they've found a home uh, for all these crazy conspiracy theorists to push back against the official narrative, um, you know, saying it was a for people with fringe voices and extremists who want to fight the establishment. And this is why it's so ironic that this WikiLeaks, uh, th these documents have been released because this is something that the United States has been doing for decades. They're still actively involved in. And in fact, that congressional hearing was about getting even more money to counter Russians propaganda, I think 15 million. Uh, whereas they were only asking for six million to counter the ISIS narrative. So I guess maybe they have some help there with uh, Sony. But all of this is thanks to the fact, uh, thanks to the repeal of the Smith-Month Act. We reported on that. That happened in 2013. 
uh, for all this time, allegedly it was illegal for the State Department to broadcast any propaganda that was meant for overseas. They weren't allowed to uh, propagate within the United States. That was overturned. Of course, the most transparent administration ever wanted to be able to propagate openly to the American people without, without it being illegal. Um, so all this is just very important to, to show you, to let you know what's going on. We do have a lot of pushback here against the alternative media specifically because they're very afraid of the fact that we are causing a massive disruption in their propaganda campaign, bringing down the government narrative. Now, speaking about ISIS propaganda campaigns, they have released their latest beheading video, and it's not known who released this video, but the link to it was posted on a, on a Twitter account that belonged to an ISIS supporter. And in the video, of course, it's grotesque again, but they're just so narcissistic, and they're basically showing all of these stills about how great they are because uh, the, the, the international media is reporting on them. They're showing all these clips of news agencies talking about their terror campaign, but it features none other than our very own InfoWars reporter, Joe Biggs. Now, obviously, Biggs' appearance in this video is noteworthy, not only because he's d produced a lot of videos showing just how easy it is uh, for ISIS supporters, for ISIS to come across the border, but he's also there in Juarez, Mexico, right now, uh, investigating reports that ISIS is indeed operating out of uh, an area right there near Juarez. Uh, there's reports that they've set up a training camp in the region. Um, but Joe Biggs has been trying to get under their skin for quite some time, so he's actually really excited about this appearance. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. I'm standing in El Paso, Texas, right across from uh, Fort Bliss. Now, today, a pro-Islamic State Twitter account has posted a brand new video from IS with me in it. You know, I, I saw this. I was shocked completely. The fact that these guys have taken time out of their day to actually go and watch my videos. I'm very flattered by this. They're actually going to feature me in a brand new video. We know these guys are run by the CIA. We know that they're funded by them. We know that these guys are that our government's accidentally dropping off ammunition. We know these guys are bloodthirsty psychopaths who run around beheading people, killing Christians by the thousands. These guys are out of control and they have now singled me out. But this isn't the first time that that has happened. This is the second time. Back in Afghanistan, the Taliban had posted wanted posters pretty much all around the area that I was operating out, singling me out, saying that they were coming after the uh, army guy with the silver hair. That was me. So once again, I've got these guys coming after me, Taliban, whatever. But I think it's very cool, to be quite honest, the fact that these guys are going to come out here and do this. We came to El Paso to expose the fact that these guys are operating south of the border. We know from FBI reports that they're saying that the Islamic State is in almost every single state in the country. Now they have chosen to single out InfoWars and myself, Joe Biggs. So actually go to our website, go to InfoWars.com. Paul Joseph Watson is writing up an article as we speak on this. He's going to post the video and post all the information about this. So once again, I'm Joe Biggs with InfoWars.com. Residents of Big Springs, Texas are reporting the scary sight of military helicopters and tanks arriving in their town uh, before Jade Helm. Now, one local told News West 9 of a train they saw carrying all sorts of military equipment. It was heading into uh, Big Spring, and they added that there were also about 14 helicopters flying over their airport there at night. Um, he said he also saw a tank getting driven through an open field there near the airport. And he said it's scary seeing that and not knowing what in the world is going on. Of course, officials refused to acknowledge whether or not any troops had already arrived in the area or how many are scheduled to arrive and when residents can expect to see them. Uh, but the very fact that here we have this local news station going out, putting reporters on the ground to cover uh, the fact that there is massive movement of military tanks and helicopter presence well in advance of the Jade Helm operation, because you recall, it's not supposed to start until July. Uh, that's a pretty big deal that this is actually making the news. But this is also in addition to video footage that's coming out of Ontario, California. And it shows armed National Guard troops patrolling residential streets and practicing traffic control. So I guess our troops are going to be controlling the traffic there in whatever region in Iraq or Afghanistan or something, right? So, yeah, just like Big says, you train for the area you're going to, to fight. 
Now, one of the respondents there insisted that this patrol is not normal. Her sister has lived in this town for 30 plus years, and this is the first time that they've ever seen this type of thing on their street and in their neighborhood. Now, of course, concerns over the fact that there has been a very large presence of troops on American streets has heightened since the announcement of Jade Helm. And that's a good thing because American people are waking up and saying, this isn't normal. Why are the troops training on our streets? Why aren't they training, uh, you know, where we're, we're paying billions of tax dollars, more than half of your taxes are spent on the military so they can have the supplies and all the things that they need to train in their own federal facilities. But now they're coming, taking it out to the streets. Um, so obviously these training exercises are not business as usual and people are waking up to that, especially when we see drills coming out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, uh, where that video, it's caught on tape, where they are training to uh, round up citizens. They're interning citizens, martial law training style. So that's, that's something that's pretty shocking. And a lot of people are really waking up to that. And we do appreciate that you've continued to send us in your stories and send us in your footage that pertains to the Jade Helm military exercises only. Please do not send us anything else to jadehelm at infowars.com. It will be ignored if it doesn't deal with these military training exercises. Again, that's jadehelm at infowars.com. Now, coming up, we've got a packed show for you tonight. We've got several reports. Uh, but then at the end of the show, Jakari Jackson is going to be interviewing researcher and veteran Holland uh, Van den Neuenhoff, and he is uh, going to be breaking down the inconsistencies behind the Oklahoma City bombing and also talking about how this event really set a, set a new precedent in demonizing veterans. My name is Alex Jones. Most of you know me from my syndicated radio program and my documentary films, as well as InfoWars Nightly News. When I got on air 20 years ago, I had discovered the globalist program, their plan to take over the world, and my focus went from running six miles every other day, swimming two, three miles a couple times a week, and lifting weights to focusing on fighting the globalist. I've gone from 279 pounds all the way down to 235 pounds and the weight's going off even faster. Super Male Vitality, Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, and Oxy Powder. Those three products of the entire family of InfoWarsLife.com products are the most important from my own personal experience. And it wasn't just that my weight loss accelerated, my muscle mass increased, my stamina, my energy levels exploded. Now is the time to take action. Start your journey today with the Alex Challenge Pack. It's the trifecta of change. Secure yours today and get free shipping for a limited time at InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Good afternoon. Today, as part of an international coalition of some 60 nations, including Arab countries, our men and women in uniform continue to fight against ISIL in Iraq and in Syria. More than 2,000 coalition airstrikes have pounded these terrorists. We're disrupting their command and control on supply lines, making it harder for them to move. We're destroying their fighting positions, their tanks, their vehicles, their barracks, their training camps, and the oil and gas facilities and infrastructure that fund their operations. 
The highly produced ISIS video says, America thinks it's safe because of the geographical location. Thus you see it invades the Muslim lands, and it thinks that the army of the jihad won't reach into their lands. Uh, we have been, we at SAID have been uh, researching the jihadi threat online for over a decade follow their steps, monitor their activities, and study their activities online. Once again, SITE site discovers terror threat against America. A month-old alleged threat against U.S. service personnel by the Islamic State was followed up by a new warning from the Northern Command on Monday. The official use warning by the military command urging soldiers to hide their personal information online follows the release of a purported IS video claiming the group will engage in another 9-11 attack against the United States. According to Sight, the video is part of a Twitter campaign attributed to the Islamic State under the hashtag pound we will burn US again. The tweets are threatening to unleash a new 9-11 attack on America. In a time of lone wolf attacks and Americans and other Westerners pledging to the Islamic State, this kind of campaign should not be taken lightly, site director Rita Katz said. The Twitter campaign, along with other ones like it in the past, shows the Islamic State's skill in forcing itself into Western conversations, she added. Katz believes the campaign shows a unified and structured method of online mobilization by the Islamic State and its followers. A video coinciding with the social media campaign threatens every American on the globe. Tweets attributed to the terror group promise attacks like those that occurred in France and Canada. The site intelligence group consists of Katz and two senior advisors, one of whom is Bruce Hoffman the corporate chair in counterterrorism and counterinsurgency at the RAND Corporation, and former director of the RAND's Washington, D.C. office, according to James F. Tracy. We're at 1776 Main Street in Santa Monica, California. And yes, you do see a mushroom cloud behind me made up of giant chain links. This is the home of the RAND Corporation complex, the most important and powerful globalist think tank in the world. Dr. Strangelove, the Stanley Kubrick film made in the early 1960s is about this organization. They developed the plan of mutually assured destruction against the Russians. They developed uh, mid-air refueling. They developed uh, systems analysis. They developed the futurist paradigms of the Pentagon. They developed the transhumanist ideas or, or repackage the transhumanist ideas of Aldous Huxley. These guys are the ones that put out public reports 15 years ago. It's how I knew what was going to unfold about how they were going to militarize police, how they were going to federalize police, how they would build threat fusion centers, how the system would set up a homeland security grid under NORTHCOM with uh, federal command bases used to spy on the citizenry. They write big reports on how to manipulate people through financial systems and how to sell them on tyranny individually. And they have the nerve in all of their nomenclature to obsess on the founding fathers in 1776 and freedom and the rest of it when the Rand Corporation is the exact opposite. And no other group has their documents taken by the Trilateral Commission, Bilderberg Group, CFR, and then put into policy like this organization. The Rand Corporation is at the heart of the New World Order. It's part of that inner coterie, or almost a group of uh, ring wraith organizations that serve uh, this dark system. In 2003 and 2004, SITE received financial support from the U.S. government. Also in the early 2000s, SITE was on contract, providing consulting services to the FBI. It would appear that SITE has abandoned its nonprofit status and now relies on corporate and individual subscriptions for revenue. In 2005, the private mercenary contractor Blackwater hailed Site as an invaluable resource. One of Site's founders, Rita Katz, is a government insider with close connections to former terrorism czar Richard Clark and his staff in the White House, as well as investigators in the Department of Justice, Department of the Treasury, and the Department of Homeland Security. ISIS account on social media indicated that within uh, short time they will be releasing the video only we actually had that video beforehand and were able to beat them with the release according to sourcewatch a number of the video site is claimed to have discovered were subsequently found to be frauds john bound infowars.com
another major health threat. This one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must-have for every modern, independently-minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-888-253-3139. InfoWars Life and InfoWarsLife.com is extremely excited to announce our latest release, Winter Sun, a revolutionary type of vitamin D3. Winter Sun is a premium quality vitamin D3 nutritional supplement. It is produced by extracting oil from healthy, nutrient-dense plants known as lichens. Every batch is analyzed for purity and D3 content. It's completely free of toxins and allergens. Simply put, if you want the best at an extremely low price, this is it. Winter Sun is the result of our pursuit of the best source of vitamin D3. The research and development took over two years, but the result, as verified by independent laboratories, is the best vegan vitamin D3 product in the world. Read the facts at InfoWarsLife.com about Winter Sun Vitamin D3. Not only does vitamin D3 promote a healthy mood, but vitamin D supports our memory and brain function, something the globalists are targeting. Visit InfoWars.com today or call 888-253-3139. We're at a point in American history where it seems like more happens in a decade than happened in the past 50 years. If you're an older person, you recall the assassinations of Kennedy, of Martin Luther King, uh, maybe even the invasion of Vietnam. But for me, my generation, we recall 9-11 and of course the Oklahoma City bombing. You know, I was a young child when it happened. I wasn't exactly sure what was going on. The teachers you know, told us that there was an event going on, but we didn't know exactly what was happening until we were able to go home and see the footage on the TV for ourselves. And I really wish, you know, I was more awake at the time. Of course, I was a young child. I wouldn't have understood these things, but I really wish I would have the state of mind to go and record these things on a VCR or something so I could have these police uh, interviews, all, these, all this news footage to show it at a later date. Because the thing about this is, the Oklahoma City bombing, there's a lot of initial reporting that was very good, but then you have uh, the powers that be that come in and start to drive the narrative. Case in point, early on with the Oklahoma City bombing, they were reporting that there were bombs removed from the Murrah building. And I'm not talking about fragments of the original Ryder truck bomb, I'm talking about intact, explodable ordnance. The bomb disposal unit came in and took out those bombs, but the official narrative says that Timothy McVeigh nor Terry Nichols never stepped foot inside the Murrah building, which is to say there is at least one other person involved in the Oklahoma City bombing, even if it was somebody acting completely separate from McVeigh and Nichols. And to talk more about this, we have Holland Van de Neuenhoff of Radio Free Oklahoma. He is a filmmaker and writer. All right, thank you for joining us today, Holland. Thank you for having me on. Now, as I was talking in the intro, I was a very young child when the bombing happened. And I remember sitting in the school building, and I wasn't exactly sure what was going on. We had heard that there was some type of attack in Oklahoma City. I'm, of course, from Tulsa, an hour away, and the teachers were buzzing about, but I didn't fully understand the uh, seriousness of the situation until after I was able to get home and watch the school, uh, watch the footage, news footage of the bombing. And at the time, you know, they were doing the best they could to get the information out there, as you've documented in your film, A Noble Lie, that you were writer-producer on. Uh, we had the early news reports, uh, people like Terrence Yankee, which we'll get to in one second. Also, the bombs they found inside the building. And when we talk about the bomb, we're not talking about fragments of the Ryder truck bomb. We're talking about a bomb disposal unit came into the building and removed those bombs. But much of that footage has uh, gone astray and really isn't part of the mainstream narrative. Do you have any theories as to why that may be? Well, there were pre-planted explosives inside the murder building. That's been proven many times. Um, we've interviewed many first responders, many of whom would not go on the record 
uh, literally for fear of their lives, talking about finding other explosives at the scene. I interviewed one sheriff's deputy who talked of overhearing the ATF agents talk openly of swabbing the interior columns and coming up positive for C4 plastic explosive. In a noble lie, we interviewed several witnesses who saw people planting, transporting C4 plastic explosive into the building, into the parking garage. They did not know what it was at the time. They were civilians. They did not recognize it. They just thought it was gray putty. Uh, but it turns out one of those suspects was Andreas Strasmeyer, as identified out of, as a, out of a police lineup. Andy Strasmeyer was likely a double agent. So we see the evidence for explosives inside the building tied directly to federal informants and double agents. So when we talk about the, the bombing there, you know, you've reported on it, we've reported on it as well, that, you know, there's people out there the days before putting up what uh, one witness, I believe she thought they were putting up telephone wire or something to that effect. And, you know, we think about this official narrative of the bombing. They say in the official narrative that Timothy McVeigh nor Terry Nichols ever entered the building. So how do these bombs get there? which in my mind says there's at least one other person, even if it was somebody acting completely independent of Nichols and McVeigh, somebody else had a hand in the bombing. Well, there was definitely a hand of someone in the bombing. Um, for example, there's a lawsuit being pressed right now in a Salt Lake City federal courtroom to release the videotapes to prove whether or not there was another person. Jesse Trentidu, the attorney, has a paper in his hand with a Secret Service timeline detailing multiple suspects in their own words, exiting the trucks upon viewing the videotapes, they describe the scene as multiple suspects. One reason he's pressing for the videotapes. What we saw inside the Murray building, you saw the explosives inside the building in the hand of someone else perhaps, is that Tim McVeigh rented the wrong size truck. That bomb was supposed to go off. That truck bomb was supposed to detonate inside the parking garage where the bulk of the C4 was planted. Had that happened, it would have been nigh impossible to disprove the official story regarding the bomb damage because it would have been consistent. As it is, they just parked it in the street because they had nowhere else to park it. And the crater is asymmetrical to the damage inside the building, inside the parking garage. So it was because of a foul up, a mistake. The government is not all powerful and unerring. They mess up all the time. In fact, on these operations, they mess up more often than not. 9-11 should have been bigger. Oklahoma City was supposed to involve at least a couple other federal buildings. Uh, no one was taking the bait, however. So we see how these operations go down, who they're tied to, how they mess up, yet still how they try to um, derive benefit from these attacks. Right. And one of the things you talked about there is the surveillance tapes. You know, as with any crime, when something happens, I want to see the footage. They say, they said Holland robbed a liquor store. I'm like, okay, did the liquor store have a surveillance camera? Yeah. Did, did, can I see the footage of Holland doing it? No, we don't have that for you. So when we talk about these surveillance tapes, uh, does the FBI have any surveillance video proof that they're willing to release to the public showing that this was the attack of a lone gunman or lone wolf, so to speak, being Timothy McVeigh? We've all, we, we've all seen the famous perp hawk of McVeigh being escorted from the jail into federal custody. We've all seen that where people are booing and hissing him and he's looking very stoic or mean into the camera or beyond the camera. What we've never seen is the footage of that same McVeigh walking out of the, out of the, out of the rider truck in front of the Murrah building. Because he did. I'm not saying McVeigh is innocent. No, he me was neither. Paul, Go ahead. And he, that's right. And uh, he deserved what he got. But he was not alone. He uh, wasn't capable of running an operation like this. Me, uh, myself and Wendy Painting, my co-writer on A Noble Lie, we interviewed many people who were in the army with McVeigh, and they all universally describe him as a total, quote, tool. He would do whatever he was told, but he was incapable of initiative. He was following orders. We have a videotape of someone we interviewed in Noble, saw McVeigh prior to the bombing at a payphone outside the Murrah building, uh, cursing because the operation had been delayed for some reason. Quote, he said he told us to wait. He told us to wait, as in McVeigh has a boss. Mm -hmm. And he most definitely did have a boss. He didn't act alone. And that's something we're still tracking down. The problem the government is covering up is the boss is likely was receiving a government paycheck at the time. Exactly. Now let's talk about a different aspect of this. Terrence Shanky. he was a first responder, somebody there very early on the scene. I believe he was actually writing a ticket and dropped the ticket to go out and 
uh, service to people who were in the dire straits. Now, Mr. Yankee, he, his official cause of death, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, Holland, was that he slit his wrist, climbed through a barbed wire fence, and then died in a field somewhere. It's my understanding that he had, uh, was, it, was he anemic? He had some type of issue that they didn't think that he could slit his wrist and then go and walk several yards to uh, end his own life. Mile. It was a mile, yes, it was, he was anemic, you're correct, Jakari. Yes, Officer Terry Yankee was the first officer to respond to the uh, bombed out federal building, no later than four minutes after the bombing. When he pulled up, the first thing he noticed was that there were several FBI agents watching what was going on in the bombed out Murrah building. He filed this away for later consultation, but FBI headquarters was at 50 Penn Place, 50th Uptown. We're at 4th Street, downtown, several miles away. Why were the FBI agents basically watching what was going down in the federal building that is not where their office is or any of their offices are? The ATF office inside the Murrah building was, of course, empty. Uh, Terry Yankee uh, continued on to rescue eight lives that morning, pulling them out. Several of them credit him with saving their lives uh, until he fell into the crater and injured his back. Until he injured himself, he was pulled out. He was recommended and was awarded the Medal of Valor for his actions that day. One year later, on the day he was supposed to receive his Medal of, Va of Valor, we actually uh, witnessed his funeral. That was the day of his funeral. He had allegedly committed suicide just a couple days before just prior to getting the Medal of Valor and leaving the, the Oklahoma City Police Department due to the harassment he experienced because he was talking about what he saw, asking questions. His body was found a mile from his blood-soaked car, several dozen knife wounds in, on his body, and the uh, cause of expiration was a bullet wound that went upper right and exited lower left jaw. So we're supposed to think that he shot himself at a downward angle into the lower jaw, but not contacting the skin. This was ruled a suicide, yet no autopsy was performed, no ballistic test performed on the weapon. Yes, it was a sham of an investigation to cover up the murder of Terry Yankee. Yes, that's a very awkward shot. You know, just like I believe it was Gary Webb, they said he shot himself twice in the head with a revolver. You know, just these bizarre things that they try to say that these people did to commit suicide. But we have to keep moving in here, and I want to ask you about a different topic, talking about uh, some notes you sent me saying that the Oklahoma City bombing may be tied to a larger plot involving the CIA and even Saddam? Yes. Um, we are actually working on a second project, putting together material. I didn't think I was going to do that, but because we are actually now able to answer why and how it happened. With noble, a noble lie, we just talked about basically deriding the official story, proving the, the government lied. And now we can actually provide some answers. It appears uh, that the bombing operation in Oklahoma City was tied to an operation then ongoing in March of 1995 to unseat Saddam Hussein in a coup in Iraq. This is why we saw in the initial days after the bomb bombing, even official authorities pushing the Middle Eastern connection to the bombing. That was the original script to tie the Murrah building to Saddam Hussein because the original plan in the CIA uh, coup plan, which, which, by the way, was the largest operation of its kind literally since the Bay of Pigs. And I discovered this information in, in a bare archive of covert operations in the 1990s, the CIA's own open source history, just reciting of what they were doing in the 90s. I stumbled across this operation, the largest since the Bay of Pigs, and the, and the plan was to pay off the Kurds in the north and the Shiites in the south of Iraq to rise up against Saddam in early 1995. This would serve, in their words, to isolate Saddam and make him basically the mayor of Baghdad. But to finish him off, we needed boots on the ground. What's the excuse? Well, Saddam supposedly getting revenge by bombing a federal building. And then now we have boots on the ground in Iraq to finish Saddam off and because of the demonstrated ties, which me and Wendy have investigated, between the far radical right here, especially the racist right, and radical Islam in the 1990s, demonstrated by their, both their hatred of the U.S. government and their hatred of the Jewish people, there was often cooperation. They were going to tie the Murrah building to Saddam and also to the so-called racist far right here in this country and wrap it all up. As it was, though, like all government plans, it messed up. 
The Kurds couldn't cooperate. The plan was compromised. Bill Clinton would not provide air cover for the coup, and it fell apart. Parts of it went through, however, but Saddam apparently knew about it, and over 300 officers were purged from his military. As it was here in America, apparently the so-called far-right neo-Nazi angle was continually pushed, because Wendy and I have investigated in the southwest of this country, uh, people who are being interrogated, actually being approached by federal informants prior to the Oklahoma City bombing, were pitching a script saying, we need to bomb a federal building with ANFO, with Tovex boosters, which is what exactly supposedly happened according to the script in OKC. So they were pushing the script, but by the time most people realized that it was a setup, apparently McVeigh and Nichols cooperated to some degree. McVeigh himself was probably an undercover cop. We haven't proven that yet, but we're still on the track of that. All right, that sounds very interesting. When you get that project fleshed out, we'd definitely like to have you back to speak more on it. But Holland, as our time trickles down, I want to ask you, because I believe you are a veteran yourself, and we so, hear a lot of talk of the demonization, especially around this time of the month of April, demonization of the veteran, of the militiamen, and of course the actions of Timothy McVeigh helped to portray that, this negative aspect. But as a veteran yourself, what do you think about this very negative connotation, saying that you know if you're in the army, you can't worship the God that you want, or once you're outside the army, now you're a top terror threat, do you think that's a logical perspective for our nation to take against our veterans? And also you see the mainstream headlines now telling, uh, the military is telling veterans to maintain a low profile, not use military lingo in, pu in public, shut down their social media networks. Uh, believe me, the military guys can take care of themselves from a personal one-on-one -on -one Al Qaeda attack. This is to muzzle the military. When the Ron Paul campaigns happened, his number one contributors were from the military. More than any other candidate combined, his money came from the military, active duty, people like me. I was in the Marine Corps in March of 1995. If Oklahoma City had gone down as planned, I would have been in Baghdad backing up the coup attempt. If I had taken up my recruiter's offer of recruiter's assistance after boot camp, I would have been in the Murrah building on April 19, 1995, and that recruiter was killed. I came very close. And I saw a lot of things in the military that woke me up to the true nature of this government. And I could have re-enlisted. They begged me to. I had a stellar career. But I knew I could not serve this system my entire life and be a slave to it. And one day, perhaps, be used to deprive American citizens of their rights. So there are a lot of people in the military who are awake. And they're trying to demonize the military with McVeigh. McVeigh was an undercover cop. He admitted to his first two sets of attorneys, told them, I was recruited out of the army to infiltrate neo-Nazi activities. What I did at Oklahoma City, I did under order. His two first sets of attorneys resigned when they were told that because they knew what they were up against and they had wanted no business to do with it. So uh, the military veterans in this country are awake. They see the true nature of their government. They can fight back. And frankly, a lot of them uh, have, don't have a whole lot to lose, especially when they're coming back to a ragged economy no future. Their wars have been declared futile with ISIS retaking, uh, taking over again. My unit was in Fallujah. Talking to my old friends about Fallujah being in ISIS hands right now is heartbreaking. They don't want to talk and they want to demonize them and get them out of the public discourse. Holland Vanden Neuenhoff is our guest. Holland, can you give us your final thoughts and also tell the viewers how they can keep up with your work? Well, I'm working on some scripts now. My work will be coming out. Like I said, they're just in development stages. I am working on another Oklahoma City project. I guess you can connect with me on Facebook if you want to keep up with that. Uh, I'm not selling anything right now, so I really don't have any websites. I'm just uh, uh, researching Oklahoma City. Wendy, my co-writer on A Noble Lie, actually does have a two-book deal with Trine Day, which I'm assisting her in research. And we're continuing the investigation. We were just out in Arizona just a couple months ago. Things got kind of hairy. And... Uh, yeah, so it's fun, and uh, you'll be hearing more from me. So thank you for having me on. All right, thank you, Holland. Thank you. Well, that's it for our show tonight. Be sure to go to prisonplanet.tv and get yourself a free trial where you can see the Alex Jones Show, the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, all right there in prisonplanet.tv. Well, I'm Jakari Jackson from the InfoWars Command Center, and we'll see you again Monday night. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire.
to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com Oil of Oregano Formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients, extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules. You will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue. Wild crafted from the Mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire. This winter season, it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano. Now available in our limited first run at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.